coming up. I had no idea what was going to come out of my mouth. No, I'm not obsessed. Pure joy, quite frankly. Ooh, fantastic. <laughs> Jingling your bells all over the place you were. Stop imagining. It was a lighter, higher voice almost, actually. That is such an odd line to say out loud. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How, How do, do you say, say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's episode of How Do You Say That, sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk, the podcast for voiceovers, podcasters and anyone else that reads scripts out loud. And it's all about proving that there isn't just one way to read a script, but a multitude of different ways. Let me introduce my co-host, Sam Boffin. Hi, Sam. Hey, hello. Uh, now, today's fun fact about Sam is that she's read every single Agatha Christie book, as far as she knows. What, even the short stories? Yes, even the short stories, wow. even your Tom and Thomas and Tuppence, yeah. I've read them all. I absolutely love them. We had them at home when I was a little girl. It was pretty much all we had at home in the bookshelf. Do you have a favourite Miss Marple on screen? I'm a, I'm a Hercule Poirot fan. If I must, uh, if I, I have yeah. to be pushed. If I have to be pushed, <laughs> I'm a Hercule Poirot. And I love the, the recent ones. I love the ones that uh, Kenneth Branagh has been doing. They're nice oh, yes. and dark. Really dark. Yeah. <laughs> So, and my co-host is Mark Rice, whose little dog Margot <laughs> is named after Margot Ledbetter from The Good Life. And and in fact, on her vet um, form, she is Margot Ledbetter Rice. No. <laughs> so it is actually her middle name. It's because Gosh. when she looked at me as a puppy, you mm. just get those eyes that go, well, thank you very much, Jerry. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> God, how British are we? Very. How terribly <laughs> British today. And of course, we also have a very special guest who this week is Cromarty York. Hello, Cromarty. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Well, Cromarty was born in Staffordshire and moved to Luxembourg immediately after completing an IT degree, where she became proficient in German, French and Luxembourgish. Uh, she then relocated <laughs> to Australia. Is that even a word? She then relocated to Australia and then to Switzerland. Oh goodness, after that incredible. came Minnesota in America, where she eventually started working in voiceover. And then after a few years in America, Cromarty returned to the UK with her newborn baby Aww. and at the moment at least is back in the UK and a full-time VO. And what I really like is the fact that she's Cromarty York and she lives in, in York. York. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of travelling around. Yeah, that's exactly why I, I ended up there. And I just felt that we needed to step to keep one step ahead of the police all the time. <laughs> yes, quite. That is the main impulse be behind all your yeah. moving about, is it, Cromarty? Be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> multiple, multiple passports, identities, citizenships. Yeah. How wow. cool is that? <laughs> multiple yeah. identities. Talking so, of the Agatha Christie thing, absolutely. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. So, do you have do you have a fun fact for us, Cromarty? Yes. I, mm -hmm. I am very proficient in being able to knit in the continental fashion with oh just the one hand. <gasps> is, is that what the continental fashion means? Yes. Yeah, so you hold everything in your left hand and then you just no. sort of move the needle up and down so you don't need to take your hand no, no, off no. and wrap it round. Oh, it's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Wow. I've never seen that. Do you do it all over the place? Do you do it in front of the TV and, you know, wherever you happen to be? Are you a, prof you know, a oh, no. an no, I'm not obsessed. Knitter? No. Oh, I see. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, let's take a look at our first script of the show and ask, how do you say that? How do you say that? So here is something that I was working on yeah, at the end of last week, so very, right. very recently. Mm -hmm. And it is a tiny mini excerpt from a sleep story all about... Japanese cherry blossom. I was wondering if it was about Japanese because that name it is. Uh, is it Hanako, 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 Hanako. Hanako. Uh, looks very Japanese. That's that's how I I was asked to pronounce <laughs> okay. it, Hanako. Fair. Yes, so yeah, it does. So the thing with sleep stories is uh, actually I won't tell you the thing with sleep stories is. Oh, mm. I'll just let you oh, do you're gonna it. You're going to let Mark. us have a go first, and then, oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Cromarty, I'll go first and then it will be you and then Sam will show us the way that she actually did it for the client. Yes, which okay. may or may not be the best way, <laughs> but it's the way that I did it. Yeah, exactly. So, go go on. Go on. All right. Do it. Okay. But a sleep story. All right. A well, sleep story. I will try and put myself in that kind of bedtime mode mm -hmm. then, maybe. Mm -hmm. Fragments of a magpie legend her grandmother had taught her came to Hanako. 
Something about magpies forming a bridge across a river of stars, which allowed star-crossed lovers to reunite in the heavens. That story had always made Hanako smile. She could see her grandmother waving her arms around like magpie wings as she told the story. She had learned so many things at her grandmother's knee. Lovely. Yes. So I figured it had to go softer than, than than I would normally do anyway. It does go softer. And actually, it needs to be, uh, yeah, it's slow and soft, a sleep mm. story. Um, and, and even if you're in the middle of it and it gets quite exciting, it really get quite exciting, but when they get quite exciting, you, you need to pull back on the excitement ah. because it might wake somebody it up. It might wake someone up. Yes, and that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yes, you don't want, you don't want to be lulled halfway to sleep yeah. and then it get really exciting. <laughs> So it's quite measured and, um, yeah, it, it's, a, you know, it's it's a lovely thing, you know, to, to actually put someone to sleep with your voice. I was going quieter <laughs> and hopefully that went some way towards mm. sleep. Mm. What do you reckon, Cromarty? Did, did, I, did I get there or not? <laughs> <laughs> Cromarty, wake oh, up! I put lots of people to sleep. Oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> Cromarty, would you like a go? I would love a go, yes. Okay. Yes. Fragments of a magpie legend her grandmother had taught her came to Hanako. Something about magpies forming a bridge across a river of stars, which allowed star-crossed lovers to reunite in the heavens. That story had always made Hanako smile. She could see her grandmother waving her arms around like magpie wings as she told the story. She had learned so many things at her grandmother's knee. Lovely, lovely, oh, soft you've got delivery. A, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And you've got such a wonderful accent. It feels yeah, wonderful. Where does, where's the accent actually from? You've travelled a lot, Cromarty. Where, where can we pinpoint the accent to if we can? It would be from Longton. I mean, I do find that when I'm speaking that I I will use words and intonations from places where I've lived, especially having been in uh, been in right in Australia. Uh, you know, there's phrases mm. and and maybe some 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 of the rhythms of the, of of the different areas. And yeah. yes. obviously, when I speak to people back home, my my accent will become much much broader. Um, mm. Yes. Where do you where do you see back home as though? <laughs> Staffordshire, well, definitely. Good, Staffordshire. good question. Yeah, and Stoke on Trent. Right. Yeah, Staffordshire. But okay. um, mm. I th- I, and but I think it's it's one of those sort of magical gifts of having an accent from the middle part of the UK. Mm-hmm. It yeah. it sort of lends you the ability to take on accents f- easier. I, th- I feel from from other areas as well. I mean, I don't know if this is true. I've never spoken to anyone about it, but from from the Midlands, that you could sort of transpose yourself quite easily, dialectally, accent wise. I, I don't know if that's a if that's a thing, but certainly having lived in those places, the ability to it's often the rhythm mm. of uh, of the musicality of a, of a different language yeah. that is the giveaway. If you can, might be able to get the accent, but if you haven't got the rhythm and mm. the way that things are said, mm. that's often the giveaway that you know you're not a. a Oh, no, it's not authentic. Native. I wasn't a native. That's mm. it. Not a yeah. native speaker. Yeah. So that's a gift. Absolute gift. Yeah. I also found with the, with the different languages as well that I, I almost have a different personality when I'm speaking a certain language. Oh wow. Oh really? Mm. Mm. That's so interesting. Yeah. Gosh. So, so it's wow. when when I speak when I'm speaking Spanish, I'll be far more vibrant, far more excitable, far, far more far more chatty, talking loudly, interrupting, because that's how. Mm-hmm. Wow. Convivial Spanish is, whereas whether when I'm speaking French, it's it's my voice goes a little bit softer, a little bit more gentle. It goes down yeah. a little bit, a little bit more. And, and Cromarty, do you voice in all three languages? I've done advertising and video games in German, so I'm trying to push the German a little bit more. Um, yeah. mm. And I've done some audio tours as well that have been bilingual yeah. in French and English for um, that some of the. Be you are a dream for a yeah. client, then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it wow. obviously, obviously, it takes some coaching. It, it's got to because yes. I've not yeah. lived in those areas for such a long time, you know. And you know, sometimes I have to say to to a director, "Let's just talk. Let's just have a chat in the language," you know, because you <laughs> you need to get your ear back a little bit. 
Sam, I think it's time that we went Ooh. back to Japan and Ooh. you showed us the way that uh, Hanako, Hanako, I can I still Hanako. can't say, Han, <laughs> Hanako <laughs> actually do. was. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Right, okay. Fragments of a magpie legend her grandmother had taught her came to Hanako. Something about magpies forming a bridge across a river of stars which allowed star-crossed lovers to reunite in the heavens. That story had always made Hanako smile. She could see her grandmother waving her arms around like magpie wings as she told the story. She had learned so many things at her grandmother's knee. Oh, you just want to continue listening to the story, don't you? Uh, that that was really lovely. Much, much slower. I see what you're saying. Yes, it's very much, slow. much slower, isn't it? And because of that, it's actually very difficult to do, which sounds <laughs> ridiculous. But you, you have to keep reminding, you have to get into the rhythm. And I find them, I found the first few that I did really quite challenging because if you're reading at a normal kind of pace, mm -hmm. you're reading at about, I don't know, 9,000, isn't it? 9,000, 9,500 words per hour. Yep. I think that's the kind of given. That story was 5,000 words Ooh. and it was over 50 minutes long. <laughs> so you really that stretching really was stuff it out. Down. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, Which is difficult, um, actually. It's it more, is difficult. Do you mm. find that cromity sometimes if you're asked to do something even slower than you normally would, that actually that's slightly more difficult? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because the you can you can slow down in in very different ways than lingering on the yeah. vowels, the longer vowels, shortening the pauses, adding pauses, or yeah. And I'd, yeah. I'd, I would imagine it's far more difficult than doing T's and C's at the end of an advert. Yes, <laughs> I think it's difficult because also your voice can crack when yes. you're going slow. I find that, mm. yeah. And and um, because you you go into a lower register often. And which can be challenging as well. So they are quite, um, yeah. They, they, and and of course, you produce them. I have to produce them all as well. So I'm fully aware <laughs> of how difficult they are, and how sometimes oh, I have to do a pickup because my voice just cracked. And if it just cracks, um, then it, it takes you away from that sleepy soft sound. Of course, sound. it does. So uh, yeah. So they're they're a, they're a they're a kind of art in their own in their own way. How do you say that? Well, we're going commercial next with Cromarty. Cromarty, can you tell us about this script that you've brought in all about the chocolates? Oh, yes. So this this chocolate is is from Belgium. So it required, a, rather than a Flemish accent, it required a French accent. Um, right. And the difficulty with sometimes with, with doing accents is... Not to make it too outrageous. Yeah, yes, yeah. I can imagine. So, so we're not talking about Frenchmen cycling in striped jersey <laughs> and onions around his neck. Then, ah, oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to really look forward to hearing this. As uh, we were briefly chatting about before with Agatha Christie, to not to have a, a Poirot accent, to tone it down yes. quite a lot, and to yeah, to yeah. make it uh, a little bit more convincing. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking now because I'm kind of thinking well, I can do, I can do a lower low. But... <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to tackle the French accent. I'm going to leave that to comedy. <laughs> Just imagine rows and rows of freshly handmade Belgian chocolates, rich, dark chocolates, and ooh la la, creamy white chocolate, and delicious milk chocolates, even vegan and sugar-free chocolates. Well. Stop imagining. At Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts, we do just about every type of chocolate, whether you want to treat yourself or treat someone else. Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts. Order from our website, purejoy.co.uk. Well, you copped out of the French, but it was a <laughs> lovely chocolatey read. I don't know why you think you'd be any worse than me. <laughs> but you're surely you're a French speaker, no? Ah, well, this is this is this is the issue with being able to speak languages. You can have an accent in the language that you speak, but not but not necessarily the other way around. So I can I can speak German wow. absolutely fluently. My German accent is pretty atrocious. <laughs> 
for instance, with this, presumably they approached you and said, we want this, but we want it with a French accent. Mm. Because if, if somebody approached me and said, we want it, we want it in a French accent, I'd say, well, I'm probably not your voice yeah, over there. Yeah, as I would, yeah. It, it, because I don't think I'd be able to do it justice. Mm. But presumably you know enough about French to think, well, I could probably do this justice. I, I, I would say the French, <laughs> the, the French accent over English probably came before the French accent when I speak French, if that makes sense. Interesting. Because I, yeah. I, I learned French at school, you know, and you hear French a lot, as you said, uh, a couple of uh, mm. sitcoms on UK TV. But when you... Mm. When I moved to Switzerland, it was a different sort of French. You know, it was it was a, a, again as we talk about was, rhythm, yeah. and it's it's a very posh French in Geneva and in the Vaud area. So their their, their French is very particular. I'm going to have a go at doing it French, and then I'm going to move rapidly on to Cromarty oh, showing us how she did it. Yeah, because I well. because I really want to I want to hear that. <laughs> now, mm. mine is the embarrassing one because I I just can't get that L O L O thing out of my head. So it's like, oh Rene, that's like <laughs> <laughs> oh you're <spicy. laughs> Just imagine rows and rows of freshly made Belgian chocolates, rich. Dark chocolates, the oh la la creamy white chocolate, and the delicious milk chocolates, even vegan and sugar free chocolates. <sighs> well, stop imagining. At Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts, we do just about every type of chocolate. Whether you want to treat yourself or treat someone else, Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts. Order from our website, purejoy.co.uk. Terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> Let's move on quickly. It's just, it's so, it's, it's a real challenge, isn't it? But um, uh, we see Cromarty oh, now. Terrible. <laughs> yes, Cromarty, now it's your go. <laughs> oh, no. I do hope no French people listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine rows and rows of freshly handmade Belgian chocolates. Rich, dark chocolates and oh la la, creamy white chocolate and delicious milk chocolates, even vegan and sugar free chocolates. Well, stop imagining. At Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts, we do just about every type of chocolate, whether you want to treat yourself or treat someone else. Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts. Order from our website purejoy.co.uk I loved wow. Stop Imagining <laughs> I love it's really sweet you're, you're, and it was a it was a lighter higher voice almost yes, it was. actually mm. do, you, do you go into that register do you think when you speak French yes 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 absolutely but what was nice about using that voice for this is it gave it a real sense of cheekiness and fun and it, and it felt really light whereas my interpretation, um, you know, goes dark and silky yeah. and chocolatey down there. But that's, that, the trouble is, is that that makes it a little bit heavy. Whereas what you did by picking it up and being light and, you know, cheeky and fun and flirty with it was you gave it a completely different feel. Yeah, and, and I think you, you need mm. to be careful sometimes. You need to be careful sometimes with, with accents as well, that you're not sort of generalising what people think an accent sounds like. It's really interesting you bring that up because as we move on to the moment we love, the wild card bit, we're going to see if we can approach these scripts in a completely different way. But we're going to do something a little bit different this week, uh, mm, Cromarty mm. and Sam. We're going to Ooh. go Christmassy. Yay! So fe think festive, think snow, think presents. Uh, there's a good reason for this, though, and it's because, amazingly, production houses and clients are already getting ahead with their Christmas projects. I know. Mm -hmm. I, I find that amazing. That in the <laughs> in ad world, yeah. they're, they're, they're way down the uh, the route of, of, uh, of getting all their Christmas stuff together. It really staggers me how much you have to think ahead for big seasonal events. Mm. It's incredible. Very much so. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. going to do Christmas characters... I've already bagsied mine, I'm afraid, because... You, I know which you, one's yours you, going to be. You know I do, a, I do a lot of Santa. <laughs> you can go first, I reckon. Oh, can I go... this one, because oh. I, I, I want to hear those bells. It'll get me in the mood. I've got the bells. I've got the bells. I've got the bells. <laughs> I do the bells live with Santa rather than put them on in post, because... <gasps> me up, you and your bells. It, 
weeks. <laughs> there so is funny. a very, very good episode of Talking Creative, which is Sam's other podcast, where she interviews Santa. Yes. I wonder Last who Christmas he could be. It... <laughs> uh, well, Sansa, obviously. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll never forget that. You, you, honestly, you, we were there for about 40 minutes and at the end of it, you were exhausted. I, I know, it's, were, it's quite... Jingling your bells all over the place. Jingling bells. <laughs> um, which script would you like me to do as Santa? That's the question. Ooh. Cromarty, choose a script for Mark. Okay. Uh, oh, it's got to be the chocolate one. Santa with Excellent. chocolate. Excellent. I think, yes. Good, good, good. Uh, good. Right. Okay. Hilarious. Are we ready? Are we, are we ready for this? Whoa there, Rudolph. Oh, just imagine rows and rows of freshly handmade Belgian chocolates. Mm -hmm. Rich, dark chocolates. And oh, la, la, creamy white <laughs> chocolate. And delicious milk chocolates. Even <laughs> vegan and sugar-free chocolates for, oh, not for Rudolph, though. No. Uh, stop imagining. Because at Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts, we do just about every type of chocolate. Chocolate, when you want to treat yourself or treat someone else. Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts. Order from our website, purejoy.co.uk. Come on, Rudolph! Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> and now, Santa, San, Santa falls over. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, Santa, you're all right down there. <laughs> It transforms any script into just, well, pure joy, quite frankly. I love doing it. I love doing it. You're so funny with Santa. I love it. I love it. I love the, the idea of you jingling those bells all at the same time. Presumably you don't stop moving. I don't. No, no, no. You have to. It's quite a physical thing being Santa. Oh, my goodness. That is such an odd line to say out loud. <laughs> being Santa. So that's the, that's the name of your biography. Being Santa. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? That's oh, so true, Cromarty. I love that idea. <laughs> that's right. If you ever wrote a book, it would be Being Santa. Cromarty, let's get Sam to do one. Okay. Would you like to choose which Christmas character that Sam should be? Mrs. Christmas, I think. Mrs. Ooh, Christmas, Christmas, Mrs. Claus. Mary okay. Christmas. Mary. Of course, she has to be called Mary, doesn't she? Sam, do you want to do the Hanako script as Mrs. Claus? It'd be interesting to, for me to unpick what I did with it and then... Well, quite, because it's less sleep story and, and much yes. more jolly, really, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, right. Fragments of a magpie legend her grandmother had taught came to Hanako. Something about magpies forming a bridge across a river of stars, which allowed star-crossed lovers and Santa to reunite in the heavens. <gasps> that story had always made us all smile back at the elves' workshop. Oh, we could see her grandmother waving her arms around like magpie wings as she told the story. She had learned so many things at her grandmother's knee. Oh, that's so lovely! You can, I can really? picture Mrs. Claus there. <laughs> that is that is really. Not, um, I also picture going back to knitting, um, Cromarty. Yes. <laughs> I, I've also pictured Mrs. Claus with her knitting. Because I was, I'd never, I've never, I'd never said it out loud before. If you see what I mean, I'd, mm. I'd never. It was really interesting. I had no idea what was going to come out of my mouth. Oh, really? So you didn't know where you were going? Necessarily. <laughs> not a clue. <gasps> That's oh. amazing. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I've never, I've never been Mrs. Claus before. Yes, oh, I, th it was I a think, voyage. I think there's a, I think there's a, there's an opening for Mrs. Claus there. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Right, of course. Now we have to get Cromarty to, we... to do Ooh, a Christmas on, character. Oh, I think elves. Elves are good. Yeah, elves are good. Elves, pixies, elves, that kind of thing. Elves, little sprite. Okay. Elves, pixies, that sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> a little elf. Shall we get Cromarty to do the chocolate one? Be an elfish, chocolatey person. <laughs> okay. Just imagine rows and rows of freshly made patient chocolates, rich dark chocolates and oh la la creamy white chocolates and delicious milk chocolates, even vegan and sugar free chocolates. Well, stop imagining at Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts, we do just about every type of chocolate. Whether you want to treat yourself? Oh, treat someone else. Pure Joy Luxury Chocolates and Gifts. Order from our website, purejoy.co.uk. Oh, fantastic. 
<laughs> that was amazing. So uh, you're taking me on as your your elf. I think yes. I might have to. Yes. That that uh, <laughs> do you know what the three of us we could we could we could we could sew this market yep, up, this couldn't we? Oh my god, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can also, I think you can bring the changes as well with it, because I think Santa, you feel like you you need a kind of, you know, a nice round, jolly Santa like you, yep. you give us. I mean, that that's the Santa that you need. I've heard someone play a dark Santa. Ooh. Have you? Well, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm sure. You can do, go dark, of course. But, <laughs> you know, on the whole, we have this round, jolly character, don't we? But the others... Can be so varied. I, I just want to head into Christmas now. I just I, mm. I want, want mm. a roast turkey dinner now. Yes, I want my Absolutely. eggnog. So lovely. Goodbye to the wild card. <laughs> and if you would like to play along in the privacy, obviously, of your own booths, maybe a ho ho ho. Yes, a ho ho ho. <laughs> Christmassy or not, you don't have to go Christmassy. <laughs> so we've put the scripts in the show notes so you can have a try yourselves. Indeed. And if you've got any voiceover questions that you'd like answers yes. to, you can send a question for a future episode to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Yes, you can. And our question for this week is. How can I maintain a healthy work-life balance and avoid burnout? Oh, diff- difficult in any industry, but difficult it in is. our industry where we're standing in a box not talking to anyone else. Yeah. Um, Cromarty, any good ideas with how you avoid burnout? Oh, yours is obviously moving around and escaping. <laughs> <laughs> Always running away. Um, I, I think at the moment there's... I think you've got to look after your, your, your mental health quite a lot because there's mm-hmm. such a challenge at mm. the moment the the advent of ai is completely terrifying and i think it's already having quite a massive impact on the availability of work and the after effects of the pandemic as well with a lot of uh, more traditional actors yep. moving into our field yet mm-hmm. we we can't let that affect us it can be very disheartening however you know you've still got you can still Polish the polish the work that you can do, your abilities, um, the, the gifts that you have, mm. and and not to be disheartened at all. It's it's a great brave new world out there. There's still lots of work we can do, and I had this when when I was at, at university when I was um, doing my IT degree. I was training for work that hadn't actually been invented yet. You know, and and Go that away. that can still happen with voiceover. There can still be challenges and and opportunities yeah. for us. We just yeah. don't know about. I find while I'm in it, while I'm doing it, I get incredibly immersed in it to the mm. point where I forget what the time is. I forget how, you know, uh, so I can let something go on <laughs> far too long, actually. Mm. And, and, and you then I work something... very late days, Sam, as well, I don't do. you? You burn the candle at both ends very often. I do, I do, mm. I do. So how do, you, how do you manage to avoid burnout and get that work-life balance then? I, like a lot of us, of course, I'm quite lucky in that it would be a hobby if it wasn't a you know, if it, if it wasn't a job anyway, it would be something I would be choosing to do. Yeah. But then that that has its own problems because you can get so immersed so that you don't know where work ends and and uh, play begins. So um, I, I do you know I haven't got a brilliant answer to this, but uh, what I do what I would say is that I try very hard not to do any work at the weekends. That's really interesting because I was going to go the other way on that because I do do. Okay. reasonable amount of work at weekends but I like to get to six o'clock and switch off the studio unless there's actually a session booked yeah. in for later mm. when I was on the pay to play sites I would be checking my phone through the mm. evening and then if someone wanted something at nine o'clock I'd go and do it and that absolutely destroys you so I'm very yeah. glad I don't do that anymore <laughs> it was so naive absolutely. Weren't we? <laughs> but uh, um. I, I, feel, I feel the same about holidays I, I see so many um the Facebook groups that, I mean they'll say good point I don't take a it on holiday with me. I just tell my clients I'm away. Exactly. Yep. I mean, uh, my my holiday comes around so rarely now that I'm there for my family 100%. I don't yep. want to yes. be dragging things yeah, through no, customs I... and then having paperwork, which we have to have nowadays. You know, oh, no, I can't be yeah. doing yeah. that nonsense. No, I'm I'm very happy to switch off on a holiday, yep. and I and I don't. Um, the only I suppose I do, I will occasionally check emails to make mm. sure I'm not. Uh, you know, a client isn't trying to get in contact with me. I'll check emails um, and I will say I'm away. Can it wait until X, Y, Z date until until I'm back? (laughs) But but very often, if it's certainly if it's a regular client, they'll go, yeah, we want you. We're we're happy to wait for it. But I think that however one does it, finding that 
mechanism to switch off. And for me, as I said, it's weekends. For you, it's six o'clock at night. For Cromarty, mm. it sounds like it's a combination of all of those things. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, f- finding that ability to switch off and say, right, no more. Yeah, I'd love to um, hear what our audience has mm. to think about that because it's mm. one of those things we'd, we'd love you to get in contact with us. How do you switch off? How is your work-life balance made more bearable? Gin. Yeah. Gin, yes. Uh, well, um, gin and tonics all round? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Cromarty, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It has been a whiz and a hoot. It's been a pleasure on my side as well. No, oh, thank you, Cromarty. <laughs> thank you. And, of course, we will be putting today's script in the show notes so that you can all have a read yourselves. Yes, and do send any voiceover questions and, of course, your opinions on the work-life balance to us at podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Please do like and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss out on an episode. And feel free if you want to give us a review. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks again to the very well-travelled Cromarty York. And we'll be back (laughs) next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest. Cromarty, we say the end of it together, so uh, get ready to yell, how do you say that? Uh, When we'll be asking (laughs) next week, how do you you say say that? that? How do you say that? that?